All right, everybody. So this is what we call rate of perceived exertion on the left, or RPE, or reps in reserve on the right, or also known as RIR. So this is an important training heuristic, rule of thumb, that we can use to like, one, make sure that you're training hard enough, two, make sure that you're not training too hard, and three, making sure that we're getting some overload over a period of time. Over the years as I've worked with clients, I have kind of swayed toward this and away from it and toward it and away from it. And as of late, meaning the last couple of years, I have really began to appreciate this approach because it allows us to regulate the intensity of how hard we train relative to one, how you feel, and then essentially how you feel is influenced by life stressors, right? So simply put, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to auto-regulate the intensity that happens with training. And so if I give you an example of that, let's say I did a 200 pound bench press at one rep at an RPE nine, and that's client A, and then client B did 200 pounds at 10 reps at an RPE nine. You can see how the RPE nine is the same, but the rep count is much different. So when we talk about RPE, most people get stuck in their it gets stuck in their head of like oh well, RPE of 10 means max effort at 10 reps and the actual rep count has nothing to do with it because you can do different sets and reps and all, or, all sorts of stuff but what matters is the anchoring of the effort that's why it's called rate of perceived effort RPE so what an RPE 10 is is you could not do a single rep right I could not do could not do more max effort on the either the weight or max effort on the reps and uh, I'm gonna skip the nine and a half for now I'm gonna come down to a nine a nine means you could do one more rep okay or also known as one rep in reserve an RPE 8 you could do two more reps or two reps in reserve RPE 7 you could do three more reps or three reps in reserve and then RPE 6 you could do four four more reps or four reps in reserve and what we're doing is we're trying to regulate auto-regulate the intensity of training so if you're a newbie if you're a newbie like a, a just getting into resistance training this won't matter as much to you and we'll talk about some rules in just a second on how we regulate that but most importantly if you become more and more fit and you become someone who's trying to train not exercise and if you work with us long enough you'll understand the difference between training and exercising but we're trying to get people to train and so if I come back to this example here of a bench press Let's say that week, this is week one. And then let's say the next week, I have all these things happen. My kids get sick. I miss it. Uh, I'm, I have a huge project that's coming up. So I'm, I'm missing some sleep. I get a reduction in sleep. My diet changes. I get an increase in caffeine. I get in a fight with my spouse, etc. When I go back to the gym and I'm trying to get close to one rep at an RPE 9, maybe that weight is like 185 times one rep at an RPE 9. And what that does is allows us to get an auto regulation. It's where you're actually keeping the right stress profile on your nervous system. And so the point of this is to limit how much stress your nervous system get ex gets exposed to. So that way we don't create like an overtraining effect, accumulate too much fatigue, which then really takes away from your ability to train uh, down the line if that makes sense later in the training cycle okay so another example that i have here is a set rep count or a range of reps and so people have a hard time selecting weight or we want to come up with simple ways that we can help people progress is we will give them the rep range so it's six to ten reps at an rpe six what that means is you are trying to be at an RPE 6. And remember, an RPE 6 is I could do four more reps. So I need to be four reps from failure. So I'm like, okay, six to 10 reps is the rep range. Whatever weight I select needs to put me within four reps of failure. So let's use the bench press example again. So say I put 150 pounds on the bar and I keep, I start going and I get to six reps and I'm like, I could, this weight's so light, I could probably do six more reps. That weight is way too light and we need to, uh, we need to increase the weight on the subsequent set and don't count that first set 
because it's not at an RPE 6. So let's say I went to 175 pounds and I get to six reps and I'm like, I could, I could do four more. That's an RPE 6, okay? Let's say I had 160 on the bar and I got to eight reps and I'm like, oh, I could do four more reps. That's still within the window, right? Because we want six to 10 reps at an RPE 6. So essentially what I'm saying is whatever weight I select must be heavy enough to where I'm going to get within four reps from failure while falling into a six to 10 rep count range. Now it's a little bit easier with doing just specific uh, like reps. So if I'm like do five reps or six reps at an RPE six, you do your first, you know, you go through a couple of warm-up sets, you go to your first working set, you start going and you're like, okay, I'm pretty sure that this is an RPE six and you're doing dumbbell bench this time, unless you have eighties and you get to six and you're like, no, I could, I could do like six, seven more reps. It's too late. You got to bump the weight back up. Okay. So, and that the beauty of this is that can fluctuate and should fluctuate typically week to week. So that way you're not doing the exact same reps and sets every single week. Um, the rep count variation, like a range of six to 10 gives you a little bit more variety to fluctuate. And then using the RPE gives you a little bit more variety of fluctuate as well. So when people start working out with us at first, we tend to give them a rep range and an RPE count because that gives them more flexibility on both ends of the spectrum to not spend too much time trying to pick the right weight and just start working out. And then as you get experience and do this more and more and more, you become much more efficient at it and it becomes second nature and there's not as much guesswork that has to go into it.